tis the season to manscape yourself, okay? If you have friends that you actually care about, get their balls right, too. You have a father that you care about? Shit, if you have a mother that you care about, get your dad's balls shaved up good so he can lay that pipe down on your mom for Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa. It doesn't matter really what you celebrate, okay? Make sure you go to manscaped.com, all right? You use our promo code Andrew, and you're going to get 20% off. Use the promo code Andrew, get 20% off. That's what it is. Now let's start the show. It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots. And today's show is brought to you by Morgan and Morgan. Look, man, don't be a donkey or an idiot, or stupid, or whatever you want to call it. If you've been injured in a car crash or other incident called Morgan & Morgan, Morgan & Morgan has recovered billions of dollars for thousands of people, and it's free to hire them unless you win. Visit ForThePeople.com forward slash idiots for a free, no obligation consultation. Damn right. Do we have any other pre-roll? Because yes, I, I don't have that sheet. Oh. You got that. I got you. And you know Chris what the show is? from you too? Come on, Damn. bro. Come on, bro. You got it. It's hot in here. Uh, guys, this podcast has also been brought to you by Spotify's original Dissect podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Dissect. It is a serialized music analysis podcast where they take a single album per season and examine the lyrics, music, and meaning behind one song per episode. Their new season is all about Kendrick Lamar's 27 album, Damn. Unpacking a Pulitzer Prize winning album, note by note, line by line, stream, dissect on Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast, because great art deserves more than a swipe. Let's get into it, my friend. Yeah, salute to my homeboy, Tommy. Tommy is a very level-headed, I don't know what I would say Tommy leans towards. That means right? Maybe. That means right. I mean, I think we all have a lot of conservative values, right? Majority of our values are probably conservative. You don't think? I I agree. <laughs> well, <laughs> not this Trump shit, but yeah. I'm just talking about conservative. Like as far as like I, I love c- capitalism, but I like compassionate capitalism. Yeah, I like I believe in two A. You know what I'm saying? I, yeah, I, I, conservative I, is a weird word because like. We assume conservative means like, uh, don't use curse words. Uh, don't wear that outfit. Don't yeah. do this. You mean like. I think I'm center with it. I think it's. A thing, 100%. It's, if it, you're reasonable, you're center. You're center. Yeah. I, 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 some things on the left I want and some things on the right I want. Chris I think Rock I'm had that with j- great joke. You know, sometimes I'm conservative about some things I'm liberal about. I, I think that's life. Yeah. I think that for whatever reason, motherfuckers don't understand nuance. But uh, Tommy hit me and it was so funny because Tommy goes, yo. Because I haven't been watching yet. He goes, yo, impeachment hearings are bad. And I go, I haven't seen them yet. He goes, it's devastating for Trump. People just need to see it. Tommy, it's an impeachment hearing. (laughs) But you thought it was going to be good for Trump? (laughs) It's it's to call an impeachment trial for a reason. So they're going through with it. It's happening today. Yeah, I had no clue. Right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Starting today. That's the the beautiful thing about the, uh, the justice system. If you fucked up. And you get clipped, you get clipped, and you deserve to get clipped. Yeah, but America's fucked up. And the reason I say America's fucked up is mm-hmm. simply because, like, you know how everybody was talking about T.I.'s hymen? Mm-hmm. The hymen shit last week? T.I.'s daughter's hymen, whatever right. it was? That shit had, like, 1.5 million tweets at one point. Yeah. Probably ended up with over three. Don't right. you think impeachment hearing should have just as much conversation around it? Honestly. Maybe it does. Somebody look it up. I don't know. Somebody look it up online no. right now. Because we don't care. What the fuck? We fake care. Just like we fake cared about the hymen. <laughs> but it's not really care. Like, real talk, I don't think people really care if Trump's president. I, I, I really don't think it actually bothers them. Hmm. Just like they don't really care if T.I. checks his daughter's hymen. I, hmm. I don't, I think we're bored and we need something to be distracted by every day mm-hmm. because life is too fucking good and too easy and our brains are not developed for good lives, right? So. We find problems and then we just lean into those problems. I agree with you on the on the TI thing. Um you might be right about Trump too, but people should care. Oh, because should? he's the president of the United States of America. Should and do completely different. Should we care about T.I. and his daughter's hymen? No. <laughs> like, <laughs> not not three million tweets. No. Yo, Irv Gotti got on TMZ today and Irv not t- the day, but maybe it was yesterday. Irv Gotti said, 
It was asking him about the T.I. shit. He said, yo, I pulled the gun on my um daughter. I pulled the gun on one of my daughter's boyfriends. But For goes, what? But he goes, I was playing, though. But I was just letting them know. And I'm like, shit, we be just as outraged over that shit. Son, you can go to jail with that. That's brandishing. Did this guy learn nothing? Dude, there's this. There's, Bro, there's this. Just, there's, he was in jail, wasn't he, Irv? Wasn't he in jail? Uh, nah, he uh, he was he avoided um, it. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was on trial with the feds for uh, something to do with taxes and money yeah. laundering and stuff like that. But he beat it. He beat it, or he no, no, he beat it. No, oh, no, he, he beat, beat it. it. Good for him. Yeah, yeah. He beat he beat the feds. He beat yeah. the feds. But I'm just saying, like, if we're if we're up, if we're shitting that, think about that. Gun culture is so normalized in America. Yeah. That if you hear a man, especially yeah. a black man, from hip hop, yeah, say he pulled a gun on somebody, it don't even register with you. I know. It just. You don't even care. It's just like, oh, okay. Yeah. That's how normal gun culture is yeah. in America. That's Will Smith and Bad Boys. <laughs> right? Like, he's yes. reenacting a scene yes, in Bad yes, Boys yes, yes. that was meant for, like, comic relief. Yeah. I'm trying to think if I had a gun if I would bring it on my daughter's kid. No. I would let my I would let him know I'm a gun owner. How would how do you do that? Yeah, just be sitting what there if, cleaning it in the living room. You know oh, I mean? that's all. How you doing there, Bob? Hey, <laughs> welcome. So where to- are you going tonight? <laughs> <laughs> really? What time will you be back by? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I know that place real well. I drive by all the time for no reason. Okay, <laughs> I drive by that place all the time at random hours of the night for no reason. <laughs> so you might see me just drive by. You know what I mean? I might do that. I might, I'm not gonna pull the gun on the kid and be like, yo. Watch your fucking self. You know what I mean? But my point is, it should be just What if he grabbed his dick and he was like, well, I got one too. Whoa. Stand your ground. He's in my house. (laughs) (laughs) Stand stand your fucking ground. He's in my house. This guy guy assaulted me, officer. Stop attacking me. (laughs) Hey, hey, man. (laughs) Get your hands off of me. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey. Do we care about Instagram removing life? We don't. Because we don't sell gummy bears. (laughs) <laughs> right, we we don't we don't need the likes, right? Like you and I have different metrics to decide yeah. whether the Instagram for us is a billboard. Yeah, I don't look at likes, bro. Who gives a fuck? I just post videos. What I think is great about the the Instagram like thing is it is basically Instagram going, oh, you're not gonna make money without us. Mm. You think that's what it is? Yes. They're like, all you guys are making all this money and we're not making any money? Oh, we're shutting that How shit down Instagram immediately. not making no money, though? Because they can't make money off of you selling fit tea. Yeah, but they sell ads. Instagram is a... They sold that shit for $4 billion. 100%, 100%. But they're not making that fit tea money and they're like, wait, why are we letting these people be billionaires off of our algorithms, off of all of our research, of all our data? Fuck that. Not billionaires, but like millionaires. Do you think you would really give a fuck if you had four bill, if you made $4 billion it's on off pub- the app? Public company, bro. Anything that can jump up them stock prices. Really? 100%. I, I truly believe that's what it is because people think that when there's no more likes, it means that Instagram's not going to continue to count the likes. Instagram's going to continue to count them. It's just not going to show them. So in other words, if one of your pictures gets liked a lot, it will show up in the algorithm more than the other ones. You just won't know, or the people just won't know how liked it is. I think Instagram is getting ahead of... What is sure to be inevitably uh, considered a major mental health risk throughout the world. I think that they're saying now let's get rid of the likes to get ahead of people saying the likes and the negative comments is causing people to be in a bad mental headspace. So if you want to have another five years of Instagram Mm -hmm. or whatever the fuck, Mm -hmm. you just get rid of that shit. Well, here's the thing. They're not getting rid of comments. Not getting rid of comments. Right? Yeah. And they're not getting rid of but, views. But but the difference between comments is comments are filtered like fuck, right? Like you can Are they? Yeah, man. You can go I can go online right now and put in certain words. And then just get rid of them. And whatever somebody can leave that shit on your page and that shit will not show up. Like you can mute certain words on your page. I need to do that shit. with nose. No. <laughs> <laughs> the, the nose emoji. <laughs> No. Son. Yo, son, this was so fucking, this is one of the greatest burns I've ever gotten from someone else. I'm at the club and I'm trying to do a video in the club is dark. So I take the candle, right? And Alex is filming and I take the candle and I'm talking to the candle and I blew out the candle, right? And then my boy goes, he goes, damn, you just blew out. He goes, damn, you, Mark, Mark uh, goes, damn, you just blew out the candle with your nose or whatever like that. So then instead of the candle, I take my iPhone flashlight, right? I turn that on and I start doing it. And somehow 
the flashlight goes off. He goes, you just blew out the flashlight with your nose? <laughs> 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 How big is your nose? You blowing out the flashlight? <laughs> well, that's, that, 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 I just think they're getting ahead of it, bro. I think they taking rid of the lights because they want Instagram to be around for another five years. And you think it would go away if if they found out it was that crippling to our mental health? Well, first of all, I I think it. I know for a fact it's that crippling to people's mental health. How, like majority, how we, of, I yeah. think I think anxiety is on the rise in America. Social anxiety and everything because of social media. Go on. I think that. it gives you a, 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 a number one a fear of missing out. Like I want you to really think about, I really want you to think about what you thought you was missing out on before social media. Now you feel like you're missing out on every fucking thing. Like what, before social media, when did you ever get FOMO? Dude. Maybe, maybe a high school football game. Your FOMO was dependent on how good your friends were at telling stories. (laughs) Like if your friends couldn't recap the night before that well, you're like, I ain't miss out on shit. Yeah. Maybe a sleepover. Son, you're good at telling stories because you lie. I, 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 so you I, had FOMO uh, I going the truth. Cr- yeah, but that FOMO must yeah, have yeah. been real in South yeah, Carolina, yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, They want to hear what I got to say. Yeah. He what happened put, last night? Charlotte going to put some sauce on that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so the werewolf came? The werewolf came? <laughs> Yo, somebody else can tell you the story. I'm like, nah, I got to go to the line. I got to hear the line, bro. That shit, that, shit, that shit ain't slapping like that. I know, I, I, know, I know that for a fact. I know that for a fact. But FOMO, um, uh, validation. Yes, I, I think that's where, I think that's where we get caught up, and I think that could be the most crippling thing is is going. I'm good when this hits a certain amount of yes. likes. Yes, how can yeah. you ever build self esteem? How how can you ever build self esteem? Self esteem is called self esteem yeah. for a reason. And it's not social media esteem. And that's what we're it's not Instagram yet. like esteem, Instagram comments esteem. Self esteem. How yeah. can you ever grow self esteem yeah. inside of you if every single moment of your life you're putting online and waiting for other people's validation? How do you build self esteem in a in a fucking kid, man? Like I take away about, fucking social media. But then how do you build it? Right? Like how do you? instill the idea in a kid at a young age that they are valuable and that they can do things. You tell them that. So it's through you. So you are their likes. I mean, I'm where the, like when you're, when you have kids, you're their day one. Fuck all that other shit. Y'all be talking about. It's my day one. No, it's just like, it's like your day fucking 372, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Whatever. Yeah, but yeah. Your, your day one is your parents. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the people that you look to. And those are the people that you look to, to, you know, instill values in you, instill yes. self-esteem in that person. Like, we're the person that can make our kids be off and on. Just that simple. So you can p- reinforce a bunch of negative, you know, uh, narratives in your kid's head. You can and, and reinforce positive, positive narratives in the kid's head. There's and the a, positive yeah. narrative really is you can do anything. And, and, and like, in your life, right, you... Do you think accomplishment over and over eventually becomes confidence in in terms of like you did a morning radio show or you did a radio show rather and it was successful and then you're like oh maybe that was lucky maybe it wasn't and then you do another one somewhere else and then it's also successful and you're like um maybe that was lucky but i know i think i kind of know what i'm doing and then the third time it's successful you're like oh wait i know how to do this shit yeah you can't tell me nothing about this radio shit so so how many times of success did it take before you go? I understand content. I know what hits. The second time when I when I because I quit Z ninety three jams in Charleston, South Carolina, and I did radio at Hot ninety eight nine in Charleston. That was my first time I got fired. First time I got fired from doing radio in Charleston. I thought that was it because I already had worked at two radio stations in Charleston. I didn't know anything about doing radio in other places. Right. So yeah. in my mind, I thought I was just good enough to do radio in Charleston. Like I am from. Charleston, I'm from Monk's Corner. I speak the language. I know the clubs. I know the places to be. I know the places to shout out. I know how to get the hood on my side yeah, yeah. in this city. Yeah. You know? Um, then I tried to get a job at another station. My girl TT Torres used to work there at Power 94. TT is uh the music director at High 97 now. But she used to, we went to high school together. I don't know if people know that. But she um she was at Power 94, but I didn't get hired there. But when I got the job in Columbia, South Carolina which was an hour and a half away and I was successful there. You're like, okay. That gave me the confidence to feel like I can do radio any and everywhere. Yeah. Then I got with Wendy in 2006 in New York humbled the fuck out of me. What do you mean? 
because they told me I wasn't shit. It was like, who's this lish tongue motherfucker talking all this shit? Fuck him. I remember they did a poll on WBLS website asking if I should go or stay. And it was like 73% of the people was like, go. Why are you owing me? Oh, Taylor, make you, oh, take your self-esteem away. Yeah. <laughs> when you say something, somebody goes, oh. <laughs> Son, Taylor's emotional today because I said my nose thing earlier and she said, oh, to that too. Really? Yeah. What's going on, T? Are you, oh, are you, you know what's going on. Is it that? Yeah. You got, are you? You know. Are you struating? <laughs> <laughs> we don't say menstruating. We progressive over here. Yeah, Men I, don't got nothing to do with that. <laughs> All right? <laughs> struating. Yeah. I don't know why they even do that. Men want to be in control of everything. Why do we want to be in control of the worst week of her fucking Real month? Real talk. Real talk. That's what? patriarchal. I think, I think a woman made that name up, to be honest with you. Menstruating? Menstruating. The worst week of your month. The seven days when you bleed, you want to give that to us? No. That's fucked up. No, that's straight. Yo, keep that. That's from, yours. It's just screwating from that's now on. That's not screwating. That's right. We dropped the men from it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but New York humbled me. But right. once I got through that, yeah. and they started showing me love in New York, I knew I could write my own ticket from there. They humble you. They release the survey. All this stuff happens. Yes. You are still getting good ratings. Well, Wendy was still getting good ratings. People are still listening to the show. In yeah, other yeah words. but it's because Wendy has allowed me to be on it. Wendy could have got. Wendy could have been like, "Fuck you, get the fuck on." But so, Wendy, Wendy allowed time for something to work. And my dude Ronald Ferguson. I don't know if Ronald still. Dead. I don't know if Ronald dead or alive. Ronald from Columbia, South Carolina. Ronald told me, um, he was just like, "Yo, you gonna win up there?" Hmm. I'm like, "What do you mean?" He was like, "You gonna win up there?" He was just like. Just keep being you. Like, keep being mm. your authentic self. Keep telling the truth. That's what you do. Mm. And, like that's gonna always win. He and Ronald was old, so I guess this goes back to you know having somebody to reinforce those. He's seen it. Those positive affirmations in your brain. And what were you gonna say, Al? Oh shit! Alex, put your lips on the mic, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> Charlemagne le- helped you feel less gay listening to Wendy. <laughs> Alex is gay? No. Alex has been gay for a long time. Stop it. Ain't no wrong with being a little gay. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor's out here. Yo, Metro Taylor is the <laughs> shit. <laughs> a little emotional, but great with the board. No strength, strength screw. Strength screw. No men in it. Listen, Alex, you gay? <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Listening to Wendy made him feel gay. <laughs> oh, is it because Wendy's manly? I, I don't. I'm, uh, oh, he's absolutely right. That's why they bought me on the show <laughs> to have to have something for yeah, the guys. Yeah, yeah, that was their thing. They 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 they, they literally bought me on the show because they thought the show was. I mean, because you got things since 2006. Yes. So they thought the show was leaning a little too... Girly. Gossipy. Girly. And, and it is. And that's the space she's in now. She's doing very well in it, obviously. And 13 years later, everybody thinks I'm gay. <laughs> Alex, see, there's a future. It in works it. out. <laughs> <laughs> the moral of the story is you can't get away from gay. Let's right? okay. go stay with you. <laughs> gay is going to be on you. You hear me? You hear me, Tank? <laughs> <laughs> It just it just is what the fuck it is. So there so then so then there's the message, right? It's like I guess believing yourself, having people to reinforce that a little bit, but having your own accomplishments to like to solidify that you can do it. I I just admire the people that can deal with like I admire the people that like have such sure view of their vision that they can deal with the initial onslaught. Because a lot of times there is onslaught with change. Mm-hmm. Right, like yes, you insert some characters into a TV show or something, and initially, or even every time we change the fucking iOS system on an iPhone, we're like, "Oh, this new shit sucks." Da da da. da. And then eventually, we're like, oh, "Okay, this is kind of convenient. This is kind of cool. Whatever." So I admire Wendy for sticking with something she knew would work, even when the poll was very against it. Or Wendy just could have been like, even if you don't think, all right, all right, it could be, it could go two ways, right? Wendy could have been like, "Look." I don't know if this shit is going to work, but I put you here, so I'm not going to be wrong. <laughs> we, so ego gets in. Yes, man. We're going to make this shit work. Maybe. You know what I'm saying? That's why, that's why ego is not a bad thing, right? Like, I've been, I've been talking to my spiritual um, advisor about this. I Who's actually, your spiritual damn, advisor? My name is Yachty. Salute to Yachty. I just, I'm, I, it's so funny. I didn't even know we were going to talk about this, but I put this in my notes. Um... Where is it about ego? Yachty? 
ego, right? She yes. said the ego is actually a beautiful thing. She said the ego is your soul imprint. The ego is what makes you who you are. The ego is what makes you an original. She said embrace your ego. She said there's a difference between a beautiful ego and a wounded ego. The wounded ego is the hurt little child that exists within us all. That's the difference. Like you can have a beautiful ego. A beautiful ego is knowing who the fuck you are. You know what I'm saying? Like you think Michael Jordan didn't have an ego? Mm. Michael Jordan had an ego because he knew he was Michael Jordan. Yo, I heard a story yesterday on ESPN. They say Michael Jordan played like 20 rounds of golf. Drank 10 beers. Drank t- 10 to 15, 15 fucking beers. beers. Went out and dropped 40. Told the guy, the guy was like, yo, because I guess he lost in the golf tournament or whatever. Yeah. And Michael Jordan said, let's bet, just double it up or whatever. He was like, I bet you uh, I'll score 40 points in, in, in some other some other crazy night. Like, I'll get, I bet you I'll score 40 points and we'll beat them by 20. That's what it was. They said the guy went from the golf course to the fucking United Center and beat this beat these motherfuckers by 26 points and scored 52. Off 10 Bud Lights. <laughs> Only your ego can make you feel like you're that fucking good. I'm Michael fucking Jordan. There's nothing you can do to stop me. I tend to agree with that. But your wounded ego Mm. is that hurt little child that exists within you Mm. who gets upset when somebody makes fun of your nose. Right. Or who gets upset when somebody tells you that you're not not good enough. Yes. Because that's that hurt little child that got told that when they was young. Yeah. So now that they're older, they try to flex on motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Because their ego is hurt. When we say, yo, yo, somebody's ego is hurt, they got a bruised ego, that's what wounded ego is. But ego can be a beautiful thing. I mean, Ryan Holiday wrote a whole book about it called Ego is the Enemy, but he also talks about the, how there's the, value how, in the, it. How, how the ego can be valuable. There's uh, Later in this episode, I sit down with a black youngster and we have a conversation about that, uh, just about ego in general. And, and I was I was asking him about why he why he's so cordial uh, for someone who seemingly has had a very real life in the streets. And he goes, you know what I realize is the people who look tough all the time, they don't feel tough inside. That's why they got to look tough because I know who I am. Mm-hmm. So I can smile. Wax is the most happy, go lucky person same, you'll ever meet. Same thing. And every, every, every person I ever knew in the street that would beat you up, shoot you, really harm you was a happy, go lucky person. There's um. I'm dead saying I'm not even joking. Like, no, no, they allow they themselves like to, to be happy yes. or lucky because they know who they are and they know what they'll do when the time comes. I listen, I salute to my homeboy still. TJ, TJ would go to parties and love to dance and have a good time and love to laugh and love yeah. to joke. But when he was ready to knock your fucking head off, yeah. he would simply crack his knuckles <laughs> and then and go be for like, it. How are you, man? <laughs> <laughs> Like that's just that's just how it was. We His name him, was Steel. Oh yeah, we used to call him Steel because he'd knock you the fuck out. Very on brand. I like it. Very on brand. Yeah, he would knock you the fuck out. But he was a happy go lucky person. He liked to have a good time. He liked to have fun. I'm telling you, the people that understand who they are have no problem seeming vulnerable. You know, the people who truly know who they are aren't trying to put on the front. They aren't Mm-mm. trying to convince constantly, Mm-mm. right? It's like we always talk about this with with wealthy people. Like the people who are really wealthy ain't really flexing. No, no, no. You know what I mean? Like we talk about this with the people who accept their mental health are unafraid to tell you they're fucking sad sometimes. Yeah, man. Right? Yeah, man. Like anybody fronting like they're fucking happy or fronting like even they're depressed. You know, there are people who try to manipulate you and they'll be, they'll like pretend to be like down all the time because it's yeah, yeah, a tactic. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like work your empathy to get shit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think it's two things too. I think that, uh, number one, I think a lot of brothers just be happy that they're alive and a lot of brothers be happy that they're not in jail. Mm. So if you really was in the street and you know, you talk about somebody like black youngster, black youngster's probably really seen his life flash before his eyes a mm. bunch of different times. Like mm. he's, He's been in jail. His freedom has been on the line. Like I, he just, he just one of his cases just got dropped. If I'm not mistaken, you mm. know, or, um, you know, he's he's probably been in situations where he thought he was going to die. So he's just really happy to be out here and, and, and you know be alive. And when you talk about the um, the, the depression stuff, the mental health issues, like I, I look at what's happening with Summer Walker right now. Who's Summer Walker? She's an R and B artist who. You know, I guess she's been underground for a, a while. You know, but she put put out her album, and her album went number one in the country. And you know, now she's on tour and stuff like that. And yesterday, she got on social media and she said she she needs to take a break. She has to cut some of these tour dates because she suffers from fucking social anxiety. Mm. And I don't think people understand 
how crippling social anxiety can be. And one of the biggest issues that people with social anxiety suffer from is that when they're around a group of people, they're trying to be what this group of people wants them yeah. to be. They want to be liked. They want to be accepted instead of being their true, authentic selves. Yeah. Do you know how frustrating and how difficult that must be when you're a fucking artist? Especially a music artist? Yeah. I got to be on all of the time for y'all? And you're dealing with your first success? What the f- Ain't no so, fucking rule book for this shit. Ain't no manual. Ain't uh, no here. You just went number one in the country. This is how things are supposed to be. And no. think about how long was she how long was she performed before this happened? I have no she's young. I didn't even know who Summer I thought Summer Walker was DJ Drama's girlfriend for the longest. I was like DJ because DJ Drama did have a girlfriend named Summer Walker. I oh. thought this whole time when people was talking about Summer Walker, it they was, was talking about her. Oh. I said, shit, drama must feel like shit right now that <laughs> Summer Walker popping. This is a whole nother person. Yeah. A whole nother woman. But my point is, social anxiety is so real, especially when you're a public motherfucker figure because you got to be on all the time and you're, they force you to be around people yeah. and people act like mental exhaustion is not a real thing like physical exhaustion we totally understand oh they've been working too hard they've been running around they've been on tour like yeah they need a break but mental exhaustion is like ah tough drink some coffee you know what I'm saying a lot of people you just need some sleep. Yeah. a lot of people don't but don't get the um, the intensity the intensity that like entertaining requires right because it is and doing this like we're having a podcast or these types of things like even performing a live show it's not as hard as building a bridge you know mm-hmm. what i mean it's not as hard as like constructing a fucking building we're, we're not comparing the physical labor to that mm-hmm. but when you're entertaining a live audience or you're doing that show it's it is mentally engaging you're using every one of those fucking uh muscles in your body in your brain to produce that and afterwards it is exhausting, dude. Bro, you most, feel empty afterwards. Yes, and yeah. most, most creatives are introverts. Right. <laughs> most creatives like to be to themselves creating. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so it's just like, now I got to take this shit and present it to the world and be in front of people and perform it and shit. Like, what if I don't want to do that? What if I just want to create and give this shit to somebody who's naturally built to be in front of the motherfucking I think, camera. I think you're describing a lot of producers. I think you're describing a lot of guys that, you know, uh, that realize, hey, that's not for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, hey, I'm better at this thing, yeah. you know? It, music is such an odd thing, man. Like, what do you think it is about us that we respond, about humans, that we respond to music in the way we do? Why is it so, I think why it's can the it drums. move us? I think it's the drums. I think drums sound like the heartbeat in the womb. So music brings us back to the womb. I think so. Because fuck, man, it can change my mood, dude. There are very few things that make me cry, but I can put on certain music and it can set a tone where like I'll get into like a storyline or something in my head and I can get emotional off a fucking song. Maybe it's, maybe it's just energy. Maybe it's just like if somebody's sad and they make a record, that energy goes into the record and you feel that energy. Maybe it's maybe maybe music is a capsule of whatever emotion you're going through in that moment. It is a time capsule. Maybe. And maybe it's just something you access. When you want to feel sad, you Boom. know what song to listen to. When you want to feel hype, angry, you know what song to listen to. When you want to feel hype, you know what song to listen to. When you want to get that's why I say let's get in the mood. When you want to get in the mood, that's why you got these records that talk about sex. Maybe. I don't know. And, but why is it that? Simply putting something to melody is way more effective than someone just saying the words to you. I feel like that about film, though, and TV. Like, it's certain TV, it's certain episodes of TV shows I can watch. I know, I know exactly how it's going to make me feel. I huh. know how I'm going to feel when I watch Boys in the Hood and Ricky get shot. I know how I'm going to feel when I watch My Girl and Thomas J get stung by the goddamn bees. Yeah. Like, I know how I'm going to feel when I motherfucking, you know, uh, watch Coming to America. Like, it's a feeling it gives me. That's why a lot of times we don't like a lot of the uh, content that we're presenting now because it don't give us a feeling. Doing that. Meaning, like, I'm not into Drake like a 20-something-year-old might be into Drake. Uh-huh. Well, I don't even know if they're into Drake anymore because he got booed this week. But... I'm not into those things because I don't feel him the way I feel a Jay-Z. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Jay-Z represents 
a period of my life. It was things that I was going through when Reasonable Doubt was out, mm. when In My Lifetime was out, when In My Lifetime Volume 2 was out, when fucking The Blueprint came out. It's things that I was going through in my life. I can I can pinpoint moments. Even now in my adult life, 444 to me represents Anguilla. Because when that album came out, it came out on June 30th. So that was my birthday. It was the day after my birthday. It came out at midnight. And then I flew to Anguilla that next day. So that <laughs> whole time... We in this villa, and I remember Debbie Dev was there with us that summer, and her husband Dwayne, and we was just listening. To, me and Dwayne was on four 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 that whole week, right? So, but these, it represented more than just the experience there. It represented adulthood, fatherhood, finances, bi- finances, being yeah, an yeah. entrepreneur, being a businessman, and yeah. like that album had all of that in it. Yeah, and I was literally living my best life. Like, wow, damn! This so is music up. can attach itself to the moments of the creator. But it can also attach itself to moments of the listener. So a song on 444 or a song on, you know, Reasonable Doubt can mean something to you. It might be completely different than what it meant to Jay because of when you mm. listen to it and how you're feeling when you listen to it. Like, you know how like some people say they can look at an art piece and it represents something to them, right? That might be completely different than, than the painter who painted it, mm-hmm. for example. I think that's true with music. I think there are certain songs that like whatever reason are baked into us emotionally. Mm-hmm. Like if I listen to Sinatra's My Way, I'm going to have a different feeling about that song than maybe someone else who listened to it. If my father listened to it. Yeah. You know, the My Way song. It's my a- Way hard though. If, 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 if you understand what, Oof. I mean, how, how can you not relate to that? Bro, but. but if you're a self-made independent son, person. But But <laughs> I relate to it in a way where it's like, it's a come up, whereas the song, if you listen to it, it's the end of the day. He's about to die, right? Yeah, it, it, or it's, it's over. But I I relate to it, it with the trajectory going up, but I'm choosing to put that on it, and I'm choosing to let it inspire me. Now, what if you're the type of person who can plan all the way to the end? That's what 48 Laws of Power tells you to do. It tells you to plan all the way to the end. If you're the type of person that can plan all the way to the end, you're looking at that song my way from how you want your ending to be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you could already be living in your ending and knowing based off what you're doing today, how your tomorrow is going to be. Mm-hmm. So if you are successful doing things your way for real, for real, you already know at the end of the day, when you take your motherfucking bra off, you can put that Frank Sinatra on. Right. Right. <laughs> I don't know why you chose bra. <laughs> That's, I mean, what do guys do at the end of the day? Not take your bra off. <laughs> how about, how what about, signifies the end of the day yeah, better than taking your bra off? Lay in bed, take your pants under, under your, your tie. I like the bra, bro. Wait, <laughs> taking the bra off feel way more relaxing. But than you don't have a bra. <laughs> but it looks like it feels relaxing. Just letting your titties go. That's all. Letting them shit hang. You know what I'm saying? It's taking your fucking shirt off, letting your taking your fucking bra off. Don't worry about how this shit sit. That's what Frank Sinatra was talking about when they were making that song. He's like, "Can we have something that just feels like taking your bra off yes. at the end of a long day?" How about waxing? What did you bring waxing? Explain when you're talking about waxing. Ah, okay, good, good, good. Look at Taylor trying to produce. Yeah, yeah. Why are you doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wax was at Frosty Wedding this weekend with motherfucking. You guys are back on good terms. Who? Who? You and Frosty. Yeah, Frosty, Frosty, Frosty. Good. Wait, wasn't he the guy that you punched because he made fun of the? Per- no, no man. man, this guy's crazy. <laughs> somebody totally that's somebody different. Totally different. This is two family Frosty. Two yeah, family Frosty got married this yes. weekend, man. Which family? Wow. <laughs> 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 do they listen? I have no idea. Yeah. Yes, I think they do listen. They do the pastor listen. actually yeah. said that at the uh the pastor said that at the wedding. What? That was part of his that was part of uh Chantel's vows. What? And instead of to death to us part, Chantel yeah. was like through podcasts that I don't care about. Yes. Oh man, you don't want to put this one on. We don't want to talk about no. this. I mean, I had I enjoyed it. I, I, I want to get married now I because of that. That was man. great. Oh my god, man! Nothing, I was nothing, like, wow. Wait, 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 look wait, at wait, this. wait, 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 wait. Nothing makes me more emotional than weddings, bro. This talk is amazing. Bro, weddings just make me so fucking emotional. Now I go to weddings, I be wanting to cry. I don't know if it's the liquor or what. I yeah, just go to I weddings drink. and I be celebrating like a motherfucker. And I was drinking some shit Sunday I don't normally drink. I was drinking Tito's and tonic. You, you're a grown man, bro. I don't fuck with you're the Tito's and tonic. You're a grown man, bro. I'm still a kid. Yeah, but did you throw some lime in there? Yeah! Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Because <laughs> you're a grown man. Yeah. <laughs> you put a little 
little Moreau and squeeze a little, little Moreau in there. I was like, put a little Moreau in there. I had that Tito's and tonic with that Moreau, baby. That Dude. shit had me gone. <laughs> tonic, a grown man flavor, man, bro. Was, Kids can't like tonic. Nah, but listen, Mm-mm. I like I've, I've drinking things with tonic before. Yeah, but it hits different it now that you're successful. Different. It hit different. And right? no, I ordered it because uh, my dude Malik was like, let me get a Tangeray and tonic. Ooh. I'm like, I ain't drinking no goddamn Tangeray. I'm going to drink Tito's and tonic. Uh-huh. And I was lit and emotional yeah, like yeah, a motherfucker. Yeah. Man. And plus, Frosty, my drink. guy. That's our yeah, guy. Yeah, man. Yeah. We've seen it all, like, man. Like, come on, man. For that to happen, it's like me really getting married for real. For real. Like, but, but, but how have I heard so many stories about Frosty? What, did he go with you guys to like bike around. week or something always, like that? Always, 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 always. Okay, okay, okay. Always. Yes. Always. Frosty, Frosty was a hoe, bro. Yeah, and it's definitely just good. a hoe. It's just good when He's settling holes. down. Yeah, yeah man. man. Yeah, man. Yeah, so man. great. Like, this is really good. Which no, 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 right. right. now I heard, heard. I heard that um, huh? Frosty is not the only person that's settling down. What happened? Mm. I heard that you know Wax might have a new boo. You know, he's out there on social media. What are you talking about? Really? You, ever seen, you, ever seen my, you ever seen my social media? I'm just saying. Did you look, up, look at my page right I'm now. What seeing, are you talking about? I'm seeing this type <laughs> of hugging. <laughs> no! No! Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Talk it, talk it, talk it. I got it, I got it, I got it. Trust me. Trust your wide receiver. He's at the end, bro. He's good with this <laughs> Oh, hey, listen. What's going on? Did I just see something in legal? my face? No, listen. Uh, this shit is. Oh, wow, this wow. Is, this is, is this Wax, what this is? Is this, is this, this is Wax, this? come on, on bro. Is this me? <laughs> my wow, face wow, wow. With wow, the wow, heart wow. emojis and the smiley Ooh. face. Oh, wow. Okay, thank you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who is this? Because listen, they'll, woman, they'll, they'll, they'll do this. Y'all don't do hey, this. Y'all, Wax you know refused I mean? to be in love with a black woman. No, she black. No, she no, not. She close. No, she not. <laughs> <laughs> She's from All the right. poor. <laughs> All right, let's go. What y'all got? Somebody set me up. You did something. Somebody okay. sent that picture. Because that's a screenshot. Ready. This listen, is beautiful. Listen, Wax ready. Wax been ready. Yeah, yeah man. And, you know, the other, the, my, my sister, she's still my sister. Oh, he Lord. was in love with her. <laughs> Can we and say who she, that she, is? The girl, no, that girl? Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't one even day, know what you're talking about. She One day she'll tell her story. Will she come on? She's going to do her own podcast. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it coming. Yeah. Really? Yeah, especially after that picture. If she see that shit you just showed me. I ain't never seen that. Let that shit going to set her off. So I had never seen that. <laughs> Let me see that. that I never see embrace, it. Like, but I never even seen that before either. Let me see. You it. never yo, see. You you're hug, in it. Yo, he ready. He ready. To, he ready to get married. Yo, when you hugging a girl from the back, can like, I can I see sound? that though? Bro, it's first of all, it's a it's, it's a screenshot. It's, it's a, a who screenshot. It it's a, a boomerang where you're just kind of nuzzling your nose against Ooh, her nose. Eskimo Let me see kissing. that. Eskimo you kissing, Eskimo kissing a woman's <laughs> neck, bro, like that, like that. He goes like this in it, like Steve. By the way, in order the Eskimo kiss, he gotta adjust his hat up, right? Listen, you know, wax don't just move his hat for nobody. He exposed himself to the world. That's what I'm saying. Can I see the picture? You were in it. I was I was there, but I don't know how long ago that was. Nah, like, I was, what was nah, that? please. Nah, dude. All right, so all right, what's up? You in love? What else? <laughs> you You're in love. What, what else is going are on? You are you in love? love? What do you mean? Are am I in you love? in love? This is holiday time. You know what I'm saying? What I don't does that know mean? Anything. I don't know. It's cuffing season? I, I guess so. You ready to be married? Why not? Frosty got married. Wax caught the bouquet at Frost wedding. <laughs> <laughs> It was unbelievable. It was God. I pushed, I pushed everybody out the way. I pushed everybody out the way. I don't know how it happened. I, I like, did a football fuck? move. <laughs> I call that an interception. If it's five women lined up and wax catches the bouquet, that's an interception. They that's told God. me to do that. Everybody told me to do that. Wait, wait, you really caught it? I intercepted in front of all the women. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> Poor lonely single ass so chick trying had to on, get married so bad. Wax had on Tim's with Early. a suit and a yes. hat. And the funny shit is not doing the, 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 the um wedding the reception. Wedding. The, the party, reception, I put it like back that? on. Yeah. I'm like, oh, right, this, the, this the group chat, right? Mm-hmm. This the group chat before the wedding. They told me as soon as I got it. These are all my guys, right? This, I hear a bunch of people like, oh, I lost. This is my dude, T Mobile, <laughs> Coop, Freddie G's. So T Mobile goes, so here's the bet. Coop puts the eye emojis. T Mobile goes, wax wears Tim's or wax wears a hat? T Mobile <laughs> goes, what you got? Coop says, hat. T-Mobile goes, I got $10 on the Tim's. Coop, y'all take the hat. 
T Mobile says, We calling for both the ceremony and the reception? <laughs> T Mobile says, I see him putting the hat on at the reception for sure. Wax fucks him up. Wax comes in the hat and some goddamn black Timbs. <laughs> so you double down. Double down. Fuck hey, the wax. Everybody got, lost. Everybody lost, man. Everybody lost. Wow. Everybody bro. lost. That's amazing, dog. Listen, man. Trying out here. I feel like this is good for you. You have a good, calm energy. I feel like, you know. Yeah. I'm chilling. I've always been like this. But now maybe this girl and maybe you're, the way that you're emotionally attached and the way that you're operating with her physically in public, maybe that's something that's going to take you oh, to yeah. the next level. Yeah. It's time for you to grow up, Wax. Yeah. Yeah, why not? No, it's time for you to grow up. I don't up. know what's going on, though. No, no, it's time for you to grow up. I wish you was with a black woman, even though I do like this young lady. Mm -hmm. But she's she is from the... Di I, what's she, uh, I don't know what that word is. From but Disney she's World? From, she's from the Disney World. <laughs> Listen, she but, yo, is who from did this? the Disney. She's from Pandora. Listen. Where? What is the fucking world? What is the world that. Have you been to Disney no, no. World with her yet? But can you explain that to me? I don't oh listen. Where did this picture even come from? Y'all went to Disney World? Was that what that was at? <laughs> <laughs> nah, Dude, that's no next Disney. level. You start going to shit. shit. We're playing a little game. We playing a game of hot potato. So we're giving out context clues for anybody out there who may know who this young lady is. Oh, man. <laughs> How many people watch this? Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right, what else y'all got? Yo, I, we just want to you know about, about your black life. youngster. This is not black youngster. <laughs> what? <laughs> Say, well, when I first got on, she said black youngster. Yeah, we're talking about the kids you guys are going to have. They're going to be black and youngsters. <laughs> <laughs> Well, black and brown. Black and brown and youngsters. That's true. Yes, That's true. Yes, so she's yes, a brown yes. woman. Yes. From the diaphragm. From Disney. Disney. Brown oh. woman from Disney. Disney. Yes. Brown Disney woman. Brown woman from Disney. 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 Which one is in... Uh, it's two of them. It's world and land. Well, world is, is in the state that you're... That the crazy state. Is in the straight, the crazy state, yes. Okay, world. got you, got you, oh, got you. Worlds. That's the Disney you. world. Got you, so how y'all know all this stuff? Where exactly? In Florida? Yo, yo. What is going on? I'm just <laughs> saying. <laughs> God. Look at this. Who made him this happy? <laughs> Who made him this happy? <laughs> Who made him this happy? <laughs> I don't want him this happy with me. I don't want him happy with y'all. All right, this what else crazy. going on? Black youngster. I don't right? know he was in love like that, bro. Listen, you know listen. what I know he in love though? When What's he start that? talking to me about the person. Interesting. This yeah, guy is yeah, really yeah, out of control. Yeah, what is yeah, going yeah, yeah. on? He's been no. talking to me about this person, bro. What you mean? To, and, and what is he saying? Let me hear what this. Is he? yeah, I yeah. would love to hear this right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. He just enjoys the conversation. Um, you know. Because I was actually bigging this person up the other day. This because it's something they said. Uh. And I really appreciated what they said. I thought it was a good perspective what on What did things. they say? And, you know, he, they were just talking about um, the way they choose to raise their daughter. Interesting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that person was just saying how, like, yo, like, they're overprotective of their daughter because of, you know, what she went through in her life. Ah. Uh. And when I started, you know, bigging her up, like, Wax just... He just went in. <laughs> Let you know me hear this. Let me say? hear. I would love. I would like, Nah, too. she's really beautiful. You know what? When you know when wax really into someone, you start using words that they never used before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. More really than four beautiful, letters. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm really, you know, what an um, exquisite woman. She's, 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 I'm, I'm enchanted by her. You know? Yeah, I'm enchanted. You went to Disney World one time. Now you know the word enchanted. Who said I went to Disney World? Who said I went to Disney World though? You went to the Enchanted Kingdom one time. <laughs> now you know how to use enchanted. Listen, Jesus Christ! Who said I went to Disney World? Huh? Black youngster, what happened? No, listen, <laughs> we're talking about you. Black okay? youngster's a minister now too. I, I, I want to do, do that, man. I want to do that. Black youngster marries I like you. That shit. And That's young good. Disney. Yo, you. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Alex, is, this... Al Alex did this. What? Alex, Alex, Alex you know it. too? Alex has something to do with this. Somebody told you? Yeah. Was it that picture? A picture says a thousand words. That picture was sent to me. Wow. Whoa. And you sent it to Andrew. That was a screenshot. <laughs> that was the screenshot. <laughs> yeah, you about to have to. <laughs> Wax, Wax, about, he told you too? Wax about to break up podcast, bro. It's gonna be some podcast <laughs> out here breaking up for the wax. Wait, really? <laughs> Man, listen. Why, why, why? What happened? What What are you thinking? All right. Which Can we, one? Um, talk First about black of all, what? 
What, what, what? Say it. Alex? Say it. Say it. Alex, say it. Say it. Alex, say it. would you like to explain the beef between Dominicans and Puerto Ricans? No. No. Yeah. <laughs> I would like What's it explained. On? Hi, guys. I'm curious. Andrew, Somebody else. Was, Andrew is listen, listen, listen. Andrew, guys. Andrew knows about all cultures. Andrew, do you know anything about Dominican and Puerto Rican beef? I, I do know about Dominican and Puerto okay. Rican beef. Uh, they think they're different. We don't. All right. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> <laughs> Got you. We, we, it's all the same to us. It is. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Now, anything else about that though, specifically? No, just in general. Oh. Just I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Maybe there's a little Dominican Puerto Rican beef that so you can talk about. Maybe. No, nothing at all. What are y'all talking about? Are you in love? Just answer the question. Listen, man, I'm out here chilling. It's holiday time. I'm trying to enjoy enamorado? myself. I'm trying to enjoy my life. <laughs> Are you in love? Just answer the question. Why, why you gotta be in love way. to be chilling? I'm chilling. Do why you gotta like be in her? love? Yo, why I gotta like anybody? I just wow. chill. Wow, that's fucked up. She bro. put you on the gram and put my fave, and that's your response. That's this, a low fucking yo, low. This girl, bro. this girl, you gonna do me like really that, y'all? Y'all, y'all both nah, nah, gonna nah, do nah, me nah, like that? I'm just bro. saying, it's See, not disrespectful, like nah, y'all. The reason I don't like that because I know these women and they good women. They good look, women, and, I, and I'm yo. chilling, but I'm just saying, why are you trying time. to? I'm not trying to do this all the time. Y'all doing this all the time. What are we doing all the time, yo? Do you like her or not? Just admit it. Yeah, we good. We chilling. Nah, man. Is that your mini mouse? Shit. What's up with y'all, man? <laughs> Do you have a pair of Tim's at her house? The Tim's there. Whoa! <laughs> Love is in the air man, when Tim's the Tim's everywhere. are there. <laughs> Love is in the air when the Tim's are there. Yeah, that Tim's at my hey. crib. <laughs> that is beautiful, man. Tim's are there. That is beautiful. Wow. That's all you need to know? Now let's pay some bills, man. <laughs> So did you walk home barefoot that that no, night? No, no, no. That's, that's his, that's his way of marking his territory. This. Huh? That's his way of marking his territory. Ah. Some people plant trees, wax plants the boot that has a tree on it in the house. <laughs> Boom. Genius. That kind of makes it. sense. And then other guys would know if they came in, they'd be like, hey, why is there a size 13 Tim exactly. in Exactly. Don't stay away from my girl. There you go. So it is your girl. Okay. I like this. This is really great. It's Thanks, beautiful, Alex. man. <laughs> Listen, I'm not mad. I'm cool. That's what it says. Holiday time is cool. You know what I'm saying? You gonna get us something for Christmas? <sighs> I guess. What you, what you supposed to do? Uh, is that what you're supposed to do? Come on, Taylor. Now when you're supposed to go, uh Yeah. Give us another uh for the That's culture. beautiful. Yo, you know what you should get her? You should get her that subscription to Disney+. Plus. <laughs> Ooh. Can we come back and talk about that? <laughs> It's probably free in, in Florida. <laughs> it's probably free. <laughs> Disney Plus, wouldn't you make it sense? What are you doing? <laughs> 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 Listen. No <way>. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it. I didn't do it. You can't tell Taylor nothing now that she's getting gifts. I'm just, I'm trying I'm just trying sending Taylor gifts to the radio station. You can't tell her shit. You got gifts? She got a gift today. God. Another one? Oh, flowers. Bills come back. <laughs> no. It's not flowers, but it's a fragrance. Listen, if you're looking for a fun way to pass the time. Hold on. What? Hold on. Wait, no, wait, wait, listen, wait, 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 if you're looking for a fun way to pass the time while engaging your brain and enjoying breathtaking visuals and a gripping story, your answer is Best Fiends, okay? Best Fiends is a casual game anyone can play. Best Fiends is a unique and exciting puzzle experience unlike other puzzle games out there. Plus, they update the game monthly with new levels and events so it never gets old. It also doesn't require internet to play, so it's great for traveling, okay? Engage your brain with fun puzzles and collect tons of cute characters with best fiends download the five star rated game on the Apple App Store and Google Play for free that's friends without the R best fiends fiends is in crackheads okay I've been playing the game Charlemagne really downloaded it um it's very good it's addictive it's almost scary these games are a little addictive yeah. you know what I mean but it gets you going I've been playing it on the flights obviously every time I get on a flight I tell myself I'm gonna do all this work and get all this work done and no instead way. I just spend two f hours on Best Fiends just non-stop so uh, the game is very good go check it out uh, let's get back to the show let's get back to this uh, this love connection that we have right here now Taylor got wow somebody sent me the picture I didn't even realize it who the <laughs> holy shit I didn't even know I said let me this see. shit I'm <laughs> Yo. How about be missing all this good shit, yo? Man? <laughs> so crazy. So who sent it to you? Let me I'm see. I'm not saying who yeah, sent yeah, it to exactly. you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Alex. Wow. 
Wow. <laughs> this guy and they say, get crazy. your boy. <laughs> get your boy for I kill him. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Holy shit. What do you mean? That's just a to, girl said it? Yeah, the girl said, get your boy before I kill him. <laughs> Yo. Whoa. <laughs> I don't know. Wow. This is crazy. Why are you just having to go there? I was on my phone looking at something else. It just looking, happened to come shit, across I that. Was yeah, no, I, was like, on, man. I was looking at this shit. Yeah, it just happened to come I up. I hit my DM. Wow. <laughs> wow. He ain't checking in that long. Wow. <laughs> this guy is so crazy. Well, I was <laughs> in a meeting. You was with me. Wow. This is crazy. <laughs> he's, he's got the best excuses in the game, bro. That's the best excuse ever. You was with me. Uh, <laughs> what are we saying we're going to talk about? Huh? Busy. No, Disney no. Plus. She got she got flowers. Oh, is, is the flower a period Taylor, joke? Tell everybody what really... you got. Tell yeah. everybody what you got. No, somebody be sending her flowers here and there. This is the reason why I got it. Yes. So someone wants to come to the show, mm-hmm. and this was Justin Bieber and some other guy, whatever. And they were doing like a combined project, and they sent me. Flowers <laughs> again? No, they sent me deodorant. Deodorant. <laughs> yes. That's what they sent me. That's what that was. Yes. Why would they send you deodorant? Because that's a project they're doing. I don't know. Deodorant? Why would they just it's made with char- send you it's deodorant? It's with charcoal and all that stuff. Don't do that. That's do retarded. not. Try me. Who do says not. deodorant? I, I, they, 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 they might have said tampons. I did my thing. You better stop all that fucking Millie rock until you figure out why they sent you deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> you work for sweating this motherfucker. <laughs> you better stop all that Harlem shaking. You work for sweating this motherfucker. We don't know what the fuck is going on. All right, so you, are you using flowers? <laughs> Can we do a smell test? Do you feel comfortable with us doing a smell test this of your armpits? <laughs> Let me smell. Arm all the way up. No. Why are you worried? I was sweating earlier. <laughs> So oh, oh, who, who so made her hot? Somebody made her hot. Black youngster made her hot. No. You just now say you was hot. Yeah, black youngster. Taylor, that's random as fuck for somebody to send you some deodorant. It is I an told odd you that was a yeah, small that is, ass bag. That is. There wasn't no deodorant in that bag. What? That's like tampons. Somebody sent tampons for what? How many deodorants was it? It was like three for all y'all. Oh. Uh, you sure? Taylor. Go Taylor. get it. Where's the bag at? Oh my Taylor. god, I'm not getting it. Taylor. Can what? I smell? Taylor, you just told a bold face lie. You know good and goddamn well I looked in that bag before I fucking gave it to you. <laughs> you just fucking let a lie rip. Hey, three for all of y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Stick it to your no, no. Did you? Did you get one too? Yo, no. You never What's got that? one? No. They're supposed to send more. No. Okay. They supposed to. Hold on, Taylor. <laughs> oh my god! Taylor, is this is, is this like a, a, a? Wait a minute. This is very important. What's going I know, on here? First of all, I'm the producer. No, I mean, I mean this seriously. I know in the winter months, often people with, oh that stink god. don't put on deodorant because they right. think it's cold. All but right. you're <laughs> you're warm <laughs> inside. <laughs> you're warm inside. No, it's, I'm running around. You're hot. You're I'm running. Running. You're running. running. And you got. The, I know it's too much. It is. All jokes aside, do you ever think you get musky? No. All right then. So what you worried about? So because let's, I yeah. did sweat, so I don't know exactly how I smell. Well, next time let's you see. smell, I smell good. If, you, right, if I ever catch let's you see. smelling, can I can I tell? You smell so lying. Okay. okay. It's all, all right. Aside, all it's all right. It smells like a like a pet store. <laughs> Whoa. Cool. Cool. We have to do this for each other. What? If I'm ever stink, how would you tell me? Yo, you stink. How should I tell you if you're ever stink? Yo, you stink. You stink. Okay. All right. Now. I hate y'all. What? Oh, were you gonna relay some I information? No, I haven't smelled there. I don't. I know. don't. Let Charlotte smell you to make sure my nose isn't off. Uh, I hate you. Let's just do it. It's just a whiff. It's just one whiff. Let me get a little whiff. And same arm. Let me get a little whiff. Same arm. Same arm. What the fuck is wrong with y'all? It's a little Central Parky. Yo, you. It's a little. It's a little. It's a little Central Parky. Instead of when they see us, when they smell us, just a little. Just a tad. Just a, just a tad. Oh. I hate you. So this this was been going on in the brilliant <laughs> idiots. This is going on. Crazy. 
All right. We got to get out of here. Listen, let's yes. talk about Colin before we go. Yes. This is big news, man. What do you think? Colin Kaepernick got a tryout on Saturday. Right. It's coming this Saturday. This Saturday. Right? So this Saturday, he has the tryout. Who trying him? I think any team can show up. Yes, the NFL okay. is holding a workout for Colin Kaepernick on Saturday. Mm-hmm. They Dope. sent out a, a league memo on Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon. And um, I think I think a few teams were already scheduled to be there. But now that they sent the, the, the memo out league-wide... I guess the other teams don't want to look bad, so they like yeah. shit. So they we gotta show go. up, and the reason this is a good thing See is because interns. yeah, but yeah. The, the NFL called this workout. Mm-hmm. So being that the NFL called this workout, then that's a, that's the bat signal to say this guy's good. Y'all Question. can sign him now. Question: Do you mm-hmm. think this is the influence of of Jay Z in any way, shape, or form? Listen, you know I am a, a Jehovah's Witness. I am a Pinkett Smith, mm-hmm. Winfrey Knowles Carter. I I I would I would I would think so. Yeah. And the reason I say I would think so is because when you have somebody on the inside that is not letting up on this one thing, whether or not people think, you know, this is something he may have been pushing or not, I think I think yes. And I and, and not, not only not only just the influence of Hove, just the influence of people who won't let it go. Oh, you know oh, what I'm saying? This social is, media. Yeah, this is social media, this is cap, this is all these things. Absolutely. But yeah. This is what we were talking about. This is Nessa, about, this is Eric Reed. All, all this is people. everybody who will not Everybody Let it go. involved. I'm with Cap. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody involved. Mm-hmm. But it's it's very important uh, to understand the distinction of when you have someone at the on the uh, at the table and when you don't. Yes. And if this is Jay Z's influence, that's why you want to be at the fucking Absolute table. God, yes. He dealt with all this onslaught yes. of bullshit when he signed up to work with the NFL, mm-hmm. of course, because people are are idiots and they just don't understand how business and commerce works. But when you have somebody at the table, and I don't want to give him you know, prematurely too much credit, when you have someone at the table, all of a sudden, everybody else in that meeting who is not on Twitter and does yes. not give a fuck about the average person thinks, yes. all of a sudden they're like, actually, that's not a bad idea. Because yes. you know what this this look, this look does? It makes the NFL look good. Yeah, really it makes the NFL good. look great. Really and I'm going to tell you something else. <clears throat> like Once again, I don't know if Jay-Z had anything to do with this or not. This is just brilliant idiot's logic. I'm, of course. I'm thinking he did, right? Yeah. If you're at that table... And it's people that can dismiss things on social media. Like, oh, that's just social media talking. And, and you cannot somebody dismiss. like Jay's like, no, this is yeah. this the real shit. It's really a thing. You know what I mean? Or people at Rock Nation like, nah, this really, this is really a thing. You can't dismiss it. So I don't know if Jay had any influence or not. We'll never know because that's not how he moves. You know what I'm saying? So he, he, even he, better. Yeah, he don't he don't move like that. Peace. But but pay attention. It's, this it's, is the difference when you sit at the table. Absolutely. And if you have to go through a little bullshit to sit at the table, absolutely. it's worth it. Absolutely. That's why you can't be so quick to cut your people's fucking head off. Yeah. Boom. Give your people time to cook. So now you know Cap, I mean? now Cap got to say something to Jehovah now, right? Regardless, no. I mean, he got to see be cool. Just because Hove was inside the room, I think it still made it. Hove probably ain't say nothing, I, I think but just because Co- he did. I think if Colin gets back in the league, and uh, I don't see why he would not make a team this Saturday because especially the way Definitely. quarterbacks have been dropping like flies in the yes. NFL this year. Yep. Yes. He should make somebody's roster. If he's going to be back in the league, he should absolutely be a part of the NFL Social Justice Initiative. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Not being a part of it because he's got his own with Know Your Rights Camp, but yes. partnering with them. Partnering with them. Yo, like, sense, like, 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 if you're going to play in the league, you should definitely have a seat at the table of yes. the NFL Social Justice Initiative. And why wouldn't you want 100%, 100%, to? 100%. It makes, no, it, it makes zero sense for you not to. Because me personally, mm-hmm. I think Colin Kaepernick's bigger than the NFL. I think what he represents is bigger than the NFL. Mm. But I, I, And I also think that it's like, you know, I just think it's kind of whack to bash the NFL, but still want to be a part of it. But if playing makes you happy, I support him 120 million percent. But if you're going to be in the league, use that platform for more than just football. Mm -hmm. If the NFL has social justice initiatives, whether it's impact change or whatever the Players Coalition is trying to do, I don't know what the fuck it is. Be a part of it. Be a part of it. You're Colin Kaepernick. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than you. You are a symbol, my brother. Like Mm -hmm. like these people look at you and they calling you the new Ali and all this other shit. Be a part of it. And how long did Ali take off when he was uh, arrested? Three years and some change. And how long is capping off? Been three years and some change. Listen, there's interesting parallels. It could be really cool. There could be a great redemption story. I mean, you never know. I, I honestly, I don't know what the quarterback lineup in the Baltimore Ravens is right now, but I'll tell you one thing: Lamar Jackson is playing on an MVP level. Never seen anything like it. It is yeah. unreal. This shit look like fucking John Madden. Son, it when looks I watch like kids Vic like, in like, Madden. Like I don't play, I don't play those games. Yeah. So when I sit down with a ten year old and play, yeah, that's how he makes me look with fucking <laughs> yeah, Lamar yeah, Jackson. Yeah. But yeah, but if, if you're if you're the Baltimore Ravens, you have to be concerned. If randomly Lamar takes a big hit, right? 
and uh, God forbid any sort of injury takes him out a couple games. Imagine you had another quarterback that could be mobile if he needed to be, mm-hmm. good arm strength mm-hmm. to step in for a few games yeah. in the event. Your schemes don't have to change. Mm-hmm. You don't think the he plays gonna, he, he don't, don't want to? He won't want to start though. He ain't gonna want to be behind nobody. No, 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 no. You don't think he's gonna start? I mean, listen, it might be so many teams there's out some there. Some places in the league you can start right now. Yeah, for sure. Start Carolina, but wouldn't you rather him be on a team that was successful? I want him to be on a team that's successful. I'll go to the Falcons. I get, or make or make a team successful. Sure. Some, some team got, just need a quarterback right now. Falcons got forty percent black season uh, ticket holders. They mm. suck right now. You keep fucking Ryan. You know what I mean? But you bring motherfucking Cap in. That fucking number seven Atlanta Falcons jersey would be the fucking uh, unless somebody else got seven already, but that'll be. Well, the, you know who the last person has seven on the Falcons? Well, I think Vic. Vic, Vic. Yeah, yeah. That'll be the fucking highest selling jersey in history. NFL history. The black yeah. black Atlanta city. Falcons. Yeah, yeah. That's, what I'm that's probably I mean, why teams going. They they looking at all that. But it might it might serve the NFL better to be half cap in the playoffs or put them on a playoff team. Maybe cap with the Patriots. I don't fucking know. You know it, what I mean? It, it, there's a lot of interesting situations he could be. A lot. In. Anyway, man. Um, but I'm happy for him. I'm sending him positive energy. Right. Um, if, if, if being yes. in the NFL is what makes him happy, great. You know, uh, NFL finally came to their senses. I don't know if Jay had anything to do with it or not, but I'm just happy that he's... Let people change. What do we always say? Absolutely. Yeah. What do we... Let people evolve. Let, let people, people evolve. change. If it's the NFL, Bro. let it evolve. Yeah, absolutely. Uh-huh. Let it change. Absolutely. Like, we can't ask for certain uh, treatment for ourselves and not bestow it on others. It just means that everything that you were screaming about worked. Whether it was Cap's knee, you know, protesting, and then you know he he was protesting against the police <sighs> police brutality mm-hmm. that that black and brown people are facing, unarmed black and brown people. But if that turned into damn, it's an injustice that Cap isn't in the league, and everybody saying I'm with Cap and standing up for Cap and not yeah. letting this shit go. Right. If that's what made them finally be like, yo, we're right, y- y- y'all are right, this is wrong. Let's give the brother another shot. Peace. It worked, bro. It's it's so <laughs> it true. Worked. And honestly, you know what the best knee is? Disney. I agree. <laughs> I, He's got, I really totally do. agree, bro. I, yo, I never went to Disney even as, as a kid because we couldn't afford it, but this is like one of the best experiences in my life for real. Oh. Yeah, you have to do all that. I just wow. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to like it. Man, I started to shot her out just now. Nah, man. chill out. I'm like, see, the fact she made you that vulnerable, the way you say, nah, you just said that like, she yeah. is one of the most happiest experiences you've ever had in life. Going to Disney. Y'all have fun when y'all went to Disney when y'all was young, right? <laughs> what? Yeah. When y'all went to Disney when y'all was young, y'all have fun? I thought you were talking about the girl. Yeah, I thought so. What are you talking about? I really went to Disney. <laughs> All right, man. Uh, as always... Listen, huh? man, listen to more of this on Bully and the Beast, you know. Bully and the Beast podcast. Take- what other podcast we got on Loudspeaker? We need to shout out. I don't know. <laughs> a flavor too. Who else on Loudspeaker? Friend Zone. Sibling, you- Sibling Rivalry. Horrible Decisions. Not on Loudspeaker no more. <laughs> 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 what? What's up? What is wrong with y'all? <laughs> Alex. <laughs> Who's on Horrible Decisions now? Now... <laughs> It's Wheezy and Mandy. 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 Oh, okay, okay, okay. Shout out Horrible Decision. That's it? The Reed, of course, The Reed. Casey Crew. Casey Crew. Lip Service. Who else? I'm not fucking with you. What is it? <laughs> this is crazy. I, you know what? Fine. Forget me trying to do promo for other podcasts. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart. You think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast yeah. and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're no. right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Hey, whatever struggles you are facing, from depression and anxiety to trauma and grief, BetterHelp can connect you with a professional counselor in a safe and private online environment. It's so convenient, you can schedule secure video or phone sessions as well as chat and text with your therapist. And anything you share is completely confidential. Best of all, it's a truly affordable option. Our listeners even get 10% off your first month with the discount code idiot. So why not get started, man? Everybody needs somebody to talk to. Simply go to betterhelp.com slash idiots and fill out a questionnaire to get matched with a counselor you'll love today. All right, guys, coming up next, we got Black Youngster coming in. I got to sit down with him. Fascinating dude. Um, absolutely hilarious, but really smart and really uh, introspective about the game. Uh, before that, like we got to pay some bills, man. If there's something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, BetterHelp Online Counseling can help. All right, BetterHelp offers licensed professional counselors who are specialized in issues such as depression, anxiety, relationships, trauma, anger, family, conflicts, LGBT matters, grief, self-esteem, self-esteem and more. 
Connect with your professional counselor in a safe online environment right now. All right. You can get the help that you need at your own time and at your own pace. Anything you share is confidential and it's so convenient you can schedule secure video or phone sessions as well as chat and text with your therapist. All right. If you, for some reason, are not happy with your counselor, you can request a new one anytime for no additional charge. It's that easy. Best of all, it's a truly affordable option. Our listeners get 10% off your first month with the discount code IDIOTS. So why not get started today? Go to betterhelp.com slash idiots and simply fill out the questionnaire to help them assess your needs and get matched with a counselor you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash idiots. Idiots. Um, real quickly, some church announcements. Uh, I'll be in Connecticut day, uh, day this comes out in uh, the uh, Wall Street Theater in Norwalk. We got a few more tickets left to that. Almost sold out. So get that shit right there. TheAndrewSchultz.com. Then the Wilbur P- Theater in Boston. First show sold out. Second show is almost sold out as well. Go to TheAndrewSchultz.com. Get those. And then New York. Both shows sold out. Really excited for these, man. And then um, we've added more stuff. Seattle, Salt Lake City, Edmonton, theandrewschultz.com, New Orleans. Go get those tickets for the Matador Tour. I will see you very soon. Now, meet my man, Black Youngster. I am very excited to have this conversation. I'm a big fan. Appreciate that. But I'm a big fan of you as an Instagram personality. Okay. I found your music second. Okay. Which I think is like this weird, I think this is this weird social media phenomenon where you can like meet somebody right, and then you can admire their personality, their hijinks, and then you find their art after. Correct. Right? Yeah. I'm here with Black Youngster right now. All right. <laughs> um, dude, I'm telling you, there's part of me that watches this and goes, this is completely organic. This is just happening mm-hmm. in the moment when you're outside of a gas station, just throwing money everywhere, like right. pouring out the syrup, like yeah. all these like antics that are just Ugh. so great. Then there's other part of me that like, is this guy a marketing genius? Is this guy like Vince McMahon? Like, are you a wrestling fan and you've plotted out the whole fucking game <laughs> and you're like, I know what works and I'm leaning into it. <laughs> Which one is it? I'm going to keep it on. It's just, it, it, organic. Like I ain't in I the moment. Yeah, I, in the moment, I don't, I don't be planning to do, to do nothing. Like I, I never plan nothing. I just do it. Only thing I do is only thing I plan. I probably I'm gonna go turn up to that on the ground, and then whenever I find some I'm doing, I just go. What's up? You know, and be lit. But you have to know what people are into. Obviously, the yeah. money stuff is the money stuff is gonna work. You throw know, money I, that always works. I know this based off um off the memes. If you're not a meme, if you're not a meme, you're not you, you're not Instagram. You like you need to get off Instagram. So if you're not in, involved in the meme culture at all, then they ain't do nothing. That video wasn't it wasn't a success for me. So it's really? like if I if I post something and I and it don't become a meme, it's kind of like oh they weren't successful. But if it become a meme, then it's like yeah that was it. And how do you keep track if people are memeing you? I mean the thing is every video don't be a meme. I can post ten videos today and only maybe maybe one of them might be a meme. Yeah. So like you gotta just keep going till you hear it's like hitting the lottery. Yeah. When it become a meme, it bring more attraction, bring it to your page because everybody's more working head. for you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, hey, okay. listen, okay. We're, we're talking this, okay. man. <laughs> okay, okay. No, I hear you, man. You see with Stephen A. Smith all the time, you follow sports. Yeah, I don't, I don't He's really, like I don't, the ESPN I don't, guy. I know, I know you're talking about, but I don't really like, I don't really like sports. Why? I don't know. I just I always feel like it was gay. <laughs> what? <laughs> Keep going. Why is nah, it gay? You mean you guys in tight it, outfits yeah. tackling each other is gay? Nah, football kind of a little rough. Basketball, I ain't saying gay like with them playing or, right. or the players. I'm saying as far as like just a lot of dudes sitting on the couch looking at a lot of dudes. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. There's yeah. a lot of dudes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But isn't that what we do with you? We sit on the couch and we're looking at you. I don't know. I ain't know that. <laughs> I think that's gay too. <laughs> Did I just out myself? <laughs> <laughs> nah, but it's kind of like, my, nah, but on, on a serious note though. Yeah. Like, when I was coming up, I used to always watch people just like into the guy and they on the couch, super deep, just everybody sitting up like playing games, watching games. Yeah. Every, life is not a game. Yeah. <laughs> life is real. Yeah, yeah. Like, what the fuck? Well, maybe that's why we like sports, right? It's because like we get out of the reality of life. Yeah. It's like there's some shit that's Correct. controlled. So a bit. sports sports is needed. It's needed. Yeah, if it's you that think release. about it, you look at their way, sports is needed. You know, cause like I imagine and this is just for me kind of like hearing you talk a little right. bit. You had some maybe potentially rough situations coming up. Oh, right? Correct, yeah. It's not like 
on the streets, there's a referee that comes in and goes, whistle, stop, play. Right. He's being a little rough. Right. Like some shit happens and then mm -hmm. that's it. It's final. Right. You know what I mean? That's what you say. With sports, I think it's nice. It's like we have this illusion of seriousness. Mm. It looks like it's war. Right. But then when it gets a little too crazy, they're like, okay, guys, break it up. <laughs> too much. It's a little too much. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like this safe version right. of war. I'm going to keep it 100, bro. All right. Yeah. So when I play football... I think I'm just, just kind of, I'm still mad about it. like I used to be over like that. They weren't throwing you the ball. <laughs> they, did <me> <laughs> they did me wrong, bro. <laughs> they cursed you. You, you, let me, you, you let me hanging, bro. Last That's time, my bro. Bad. My bad. I'll chalk it up to my whiteness. <laughs> <laughs> so, nah, but I uh, yeah, they, I'm like that. So look, then I got on basketball court. Yeah. I said, I know they're gonna see me for sure. This is inside. This ain't no long yard on the field or nothing. Yeah. I, ain't, I ain't too far from you. Yeah. Football, I you too far. You to the left, I ain't gonna see you. Yeah. But this basketball, now I'm like, do my little dribble pass the ball. I get out and I'm like, yeah, hey, hey. You, know, you make the little no act. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Throw one, two. Yeah. <laughs> that ain't throw me shit. <laughs> you calling out football yeah, players on the basketball court? Just, 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 just picture me oh, in the corner. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm making my the little squeak dish on the, on the, on the, on the, yeah yeah like I ain't doing shit I'm, I ain't throwing me nothing man so I knew then I said man fuck sports <laughs> you said you'll get your attention in other ways yeah. so then you go to music and here's the thing that's interesting it's like there are a lot of guys with like the Instagram antics that don't have let me cut you one time go Man, I'm saying what really made me mad, mad one time. I oh, you really feel the way about these uh, yeah, sports, dog? Right. I was playing basketball. I was playing basketball. Man, look, I asked you my little three. Yeah. So, man, I'm, I'm coming. I right, it's this dude he in, from my neighborhood when yeah. I was coming up. Yeah. He was like the weakest dude in the neighborhood, super weak, but all he can do is play basketball. So I was like the gangster, <laughs> I was like the gangster dude ever. I was so gangster, it didn't make no sense. Like he, he could, when he see me walk down the street, he got he get out my way. So we on the court. Yeah. I'm coming down the court with the jump. I thought he gonna get out of my way. Man, got out of my way and smack my shit. <laughs> I said, oh, like, oh, he, he wanna play. So he get the ball. So I'm like, boom, I'm like, I'm too, I'm too tough. I ain't gonna get out of his way. Yeah. So he come down the court. I'm thinking he's gonna just be, be nice to me, like, cause I'm gangster. Yeah. But this the court. I ain't knowing that this yeah. ain't gonna do the streets. <laughs> yeah. Man, that man come down and raise his nuts up and <laughs> no. boom. Jumped on me. Look, I'm like that. Look, I looked up. <laughs> Look, I got off the court, got in the grass, and grabbed my gun. I said, come over here. <laughs> I said, come over here to this shit real bad. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? Tell you, nah, he ain't come over there. I was mad as hell, though. He was big as hell. He ain't come in that grass, though. You know, I'm green in that grass, man. Now, how'd you become the most gangster person in your neighborhood? Because, I, I mean, I come from it. Like, um, I did a lot of things coming up, you know? Things yeah. you can't talk about. Yeah, things well, I can't talk about. I don't want you about. to get in yeah, trouble. Nah, I ain't gonna get in no trouble. I ain't but good. circumstantially, these are things that you had to do to survive, or you made really bad decisions you wish you No, nah, I, I had to survive, and then once I survived it, I just got a hang of their life, and I just kept going at it. That's why I smile so much. Like, how you able to look at me on Instagram and smile? Yeah. Hey, I'm like that because I'm really gangster. You never notice, like, people don't play with me? Talk to yeah. Talk yeah, to me like, about this. What do you mean? Because it's like it's uh, like a lot of people they uh mic lift the mic up a little bit. It was so a lot no of people. A lot of people is kind of like they um uh, they gotta have a mean face out. They the yes or they just you know just a super. I'm trying to scare you. Look yes. Me, I don't have to have that. I'm a real gangster. I, I grew up where, where it's like the gangsters play football with the kids, laugh, dance, hit the cha cha. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Do your thing. You know what I'm saying? Hey baby, you know you you you, you, you live your life. So it's like when you when you when I was like, damn, if I'm if I'm I'm so gangster, I'm like, if I switch it up with me being who I am, if I switch up and start being happy and smiling more, that'll get me farther than anything. So I'm like, right. I'm, yeah, so I'd rather be happy. Like, couldn't nobody like me. I'd have been got tried if I wasn't living like this for real. Like, somebody so would have been tried me. You weren't you weren't concerned that like having this fun exterior would would remove some of the like fear that being gangster induces. No. Never. Yeah, not never. Because you seem to me so approachable, right. you know, uh just kind of but, like, but you're like not, I asked you for but, a picture, it, it, you were so cool but, about it. You see, know? The thing is, you're not a gangster. Ah. So you so what gave that so, away? So if you was a gangster, you'd you'd automatically notice he's a gangster. I noticed your handshake what was I do, a little bit gangster. It don't matter how I do, what I smile, what I, what, whatever I do. Yeah. If you're a gangster, you know the gangsters know the gangsters. They're real on the streets. They, he do this. Can you, real on the streets, he with it. Can you, can you, now you know that from like word of mouth or there's a way to look at you and it's, it's tell. It's kind of like you got, you, got, you got real gangsters that vouch for it. You got ah. some people that seen something with their own ass. You got some people, you know, they, they, they call, they make them call. Yeah, he, he did. 
know what I'm saying? Woo 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 woo. You know I saying? definitely know what you're yeah, saying. You come through that. with the woo yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I understood all of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if I hear someone going woody 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 woo, he come through with the woody woo. That motherfucker is gangster. So get out the woody woo. Get out the woody woo. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, I think but, we just wrote a song. But I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was about to slap. Nah, but I um. So you're saying other dudes just recognize and understand, and they they they, they the gangsters. The, and those are the only people you really are concerned with their opinion because those are the people that are going to try you. A soft they, dude is not going to try, try you. So you can be happy with the soft, soft guys. Dude, yeah, oh, that can be cool. But the gangster. So gangsters, you're saying I'm soft. I ain't saying you soft. I'm just saying you're not a gangster. <laughs> you're right. So if you're not a gangster, it's like, yeah. I want you to come I want to come out. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I want you to come out like, I want you to come out as like, um, I want you to feel like I can talk to black youngsters about anything. Right. For example, yeah. When I used to mug every day, yeah. and I was just like super tough one playing, like don't play with me. I'm some just super mad face and get and give me nowhere. I was I was doing a video shoot. Everybody in the video, bro, they was like super tough, just <laughs> look at the camera. <laughs> nigga. <laughs> 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 like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so true. Like, who the fuck no, wants to watch so it? So I was like, <laughs> look, we like, I'm, I'm doing a video. Still, yeah. Now check me out. Like, the camera get to me, bro. We on a this, this a nice song. I now I remind you like a, yeah. a happy song. Like yeah, this, this somebody sing happy <laughs> happy <And> birthday. Like, <laughs> I sing happy birthday. Happy. happy black or white happy birthday. Man, no, either or. Okay. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, black you know youngster. Saying? So like, the, the camera get to me. The camera get to me. Get what I did. <laughs> I had said I can't. Hold, I couldn't hold it in. I said these niggas is not tough. <laughs> Because you knew they were all acting. Yeah, I'm like, but y'all niggas acting for this camera. This is a nice song. Y'all want to serve me gangster. <laughs> I knew that I went to her. So I say, man, I'm going to start smiling because your smile, it determines how far you're going to go in life. Like some people see Speak you not. Speak on that. Because when they see you not smiling, when, if I if I walked in the room and everybody was in here just looking super, you know, like, let's say if I want to tell you something. Yeah. If you looking mad and sad, I ain't going to tell you shit. Because uh. I be like, you ain't going to take this the right way. If it's good or bad, but if you smile, then I can tell you anything. So more people are sharing information with you. More people. Yeah, are I, I get more information. I get more connection. I get put up on game about certain things. When I was mean mugging, I ain't even want to talk to people that had the information. <laughs> I, I ain't even want to talk to the mailman. He just dropped the mail off because <laughs> it's bills. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. based on what I'm saying, you know, like. But you're developing this shit, this shit on your own. I, let me cut you real fast. Go go go. Hey, go, so go. look, I'm looking for a couple to marry, and um. I need y'all to I need y'all to call my phone. I'm trying to pay for a wedding. I got my my uh, my minister license now. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be the one to do the wedding and marry a, a couple. Yeah. So I'm gonna pay for the wedding, pay for everything in my <laughs> what pocket. Is going on it's gonna right be now? you got you got to call eight seven seven real black R E V B L A C. Can you tell me what the car? Yeah, I got you. You got to call eight seven seven rev black one C no K. So let me cut you off again. Yeah, time. you got, please so please cut I got me my off. Thanks. I got my new. That's about three cutoffs. This my new merch right here. Heavy count. It's inside out. It's reversible. Ah, yeah. So, got you. This is my new merch. You gotta go to heavycam.com mm -hmm. to um, purchase your jacket. Right. Get an ASAP because they sitting out. They they, they they going faster than Jesus. Yeah. And I got my album coming out. Church on Sunday on November 29th. I got um, Chris Brown feature on it. Okay. I got um, P and B Rock feature on it. Okay. I got Yo Got It Money Bag feature on it. I got um, City Girls, JT, and Young Miami. Both okay. of them. Okay. I got the baby. Yeah. I, and I got many more. And I got uh, I got my tour coming up, Church on Sunday tour. We just did overseas, sold out, sold out overseas. Yeah. Now we done with overseas. Where'd you so go overseas? I went to Italy. Uh, I'm uh, sorry, where? Italy. Italy. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I went to, I went to, I went to, I went to Co Copenhagen. Copenhagen want to get nasty. I'm calling and, uh, it. I'm calling it Italy. And I, uh, <laughs> From now I, on, it's Italy. Italy. <laughs> it's not Italy. Sorry, uh, Italians. And another thing. You're I, Italian. I start, I start uh, Church on Sunday tour, January or February. Right. I'll be going on tour for Church on Sunday in the United States. Yeah. And I got my show in Memphis, our release concert on that the 29th. And make a war how now you're it. from now Memphis, you okay? Why are you guys so good at killing? Hmm? Memphis, <laughs> you almost killed me. <laughs> that was gangster. What you say? <laughs> <laughs> no, Memphis, the first forty-eight. 
There's a reason why they shoot that there, I right? I ain't kidding, Anna. It's, it's serious. Why? What is it about it? I mean, I've been to Memphis. It's, it's like, nice. The food is good. Okay. It, the, 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 well, I don't know much more. <laughs> but real talk, like after that barbecue, right. how are you not too exhausted to kill? Man, it's kind of like my, like the kids, they come, they, they grow up and it's like, for example, when I was coming up. Yeah. I ain't gonna say when I was coming up, I'm gonna say something super gangster and I don't wanna say what I did because yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't yeah. do it. Allegedly. Yeah, I didn't, yeah. I didn't do it. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> these the kids coming up now, let's say like they might, they, they uncle might get killed by this side of town over here. So it's like, so it's like you grow, it's, it's like a grown. Shakespearean. Yeah, yeah, like, it's like my this uncle family, died over there, so family. it's war forever. How do you stop that? You can't stop that. So that's just something that will exist forever. People have babies just so they can grow up to take the other side out. Like, it's like, huh? Yeah, like, yeah, in the hood. Oh, yeah. But how would you stop it? Let's say you're Reverend Black. Right. Let's say you want to end the violence. Right. What would be your suggestion? I'm not ending this shit. I want to squash beef. <laughs> if you beefing with somebody, beef with that person for life. Really? One day they're going to take you out. It never stops. Man, look, if you lose if on a loss, nah, you can't. Once somebody dies, it's over with. Once blood get the shit, it's over with. Really? Don't squash it. I advise you not to squash it. They playing you. They playing both sides. They playing. They trying to play. Trying to rock you. They trying to rock you like a baby. Rock you to sleep. Oh. Yeah. So like yo, let's squash it, and then yeah. they find you. They still just shoot you in the back of the head. Why rock it like a baby? Why? <laughs> Say it with me. Why? Say it with me. We got so many good hits, bro. I really think I need some credit on this, dude. I need that writing credit, dude. I need that Beyonce writing credit. No, it's, it's crazy, Memphis, though, bro. This really? Shit, yeah, I wish I could help more. Like right now, I'm a spokesperson for juvenile court. Okay. So I go help all the kids that got like um pistol charges and stuff, gun charges or right. whatever. Uh, sort of them things, and um, I try to help them out, like uh, get getting out of jail, get jobs, and talk to them, keep them out of trouble. Like I, I have to go speak, like. Both times after year. Was it weird making money legit for the first time in your life? Yeah, it was super weird. I still was trying to hide it like I was just doing something illegal. Okay, and then yeah. <laughs> like like when I, for example, I got to pay 2500 for my, my uh, for my first little show. Now I got five. I'm tripping. I got 5000 uh -huh. Then I um, I took the money. Uh, they they put it in my account. Put the money in my account. Yeah. So I'm like, damn, man. I got 2500 just sitting in the account. I'm, uh, that's, uh, that's how I'm looking at it. I'm like, what the fuck? Hey. Before might say something. They might come get me. They might, look, I went to the bank. I said, I want to get, get some money out. She said, how much? I said, how much is one in there? She said, um, sir, 2500 I said, I want 2500 <laughs> Look, she said, what are you going to do with it? I said, I don't know. They said, if it's in the bank, the IRS going to get it. She said, uh, she said, Sir, they still gonna get it because it came to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I right, fucking leave it. But in I pay taxes though. I pay taxes though. It was just the beginning when I first came so in. Is that is that another tough thing? Also, it's like you're dealing with all your money. I even feel like this when I first started making money. You have to rely on certain people to look after your money. No me. You so you look after every penny. Every of your penny, money. bro. I don't play because I have to pay them. I have to pay the IRS. Like I'm gonna pay them. But you don't I'm have a business gonna manager them. or nothing like that? Yeah, I got I got all of it, but I still look at mine. What do they say when they see your Instagram? Uh, and they, they see now they, they, they cool with it, like on a gas station floor. Because like when you see me with cash, I go to the bank and get the cash. See, now I go to the bank, get the cash out, and I just go show it and, put it, and I yeah. put it back in the bank. I don't just have no $2 million laying around me. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. went to the bank and I said, I want $2 million. They said, come in Thursday. I said, okay. Came in Thursday. Yeah. Yes, I came in Thursday. I yeah. came in Thursday. They gave me two million. I did my video. Went right back to the bank. They, they were for clothes. I said, I'm at the door knocking. <laughs> <laughs> I've like, got some money. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, I got to open the motherfucking door. They let me in. I give them the money back. I'm like, huh, put it back in my account. So it's kind of, Why use real money? Why not use the fake money? Nah, man, I can't do that. No, because you, no, because you have it, right? Like, like people who wear like a fake chain or have like a fake car, or fake sneakers or something like that, right? Like, right. if they can't afford it, it's fake. But mm -hmm. if they can, like if Bill Gates wears a pair of fake sneakers, it don't make any difference. And he could buy the Nike if he wants to. You kind of got a point. Like, but we're not gonna we're not gonna drive that car, huh? I don't want to be in your car. I want to kiss a taxi. You drive you alone. You want to be in someone else's car? You I don't really, even I really, know. I really, I really you know me. We sung happy I, birthday. I really, I, 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 <laughs> I'm sorry, man, but you forced me to be like this. You talking about fake clothes and shoes. I but you hear what I'm saying? Like, if you got the money, fake isn't I, I get what important. you're saying. I get, I get your point. But the thing is, man, if you can't afford this, you don't put it on because you still get, you you, you making, uh, I, like me, I can't wear anything fake because if I put something fake on, I'm encouraging my fans to go buy this shit for real, for real. 
I so they, you're encouraging them to buy the fake shit. Yeah, they encourage them to buy the real thing. So I, I can't even give them advice on, hey, nah, this ain't real. I'm going to get that. Like, if I go pay $50 for a Gucci jacket, then one of my fans, they see me with it on. They going to automatically, because I'm rich, they going to think, oh, you paid 10000 for that Gucci jacket. So get they going to do? Go spend 10000 for a Gucci jacket. Uh -huh. I don't want to see people go broke. So you feel like a a, a responsibility. Yeah, so I have to wear real <laughs> things. Like, how I have this on, I, I got affordable things on. Like, I'm to the point where I don't even wear super high stuff all the time. Huh. And, and when, I, when I do wear it, I don't broadcast it because Cause now you somebody have can't afford money, it. Because now you have fucking money, dude. That's the difference. Like, rich people that are really rich, they don't ever flex. Mm -mm. Think about the richest people, dude. Real talk. But Warren Buffett drives a Honda. They don't, they don't never flex. <laughs> they don't never flex. But guess what? They, this because they came out the womb rich. No, Ooh. there are guys that made it from nothing, right? Yeah. And I'm sure they flexed on the way up. Don't get me wrong. Right. I'm sure on the way up they flex. But then when they got real money and then they realize, I don't got to impress these broke motherfuckers. That's where I'm at now. Like, I'm at that point. Of the, I just like throwing cash, bro. Yeah. It, it was a point. I Like, I fucked off literally probably like 400 grand one year just going to the strip club because I want to see myself <laughs> throw money Man. on the camera. You spent $400,000. One year. At the strip club. At the strip club. And I still had to pay taxes on it. I couldn't even write the whores off. For <laughs> <laughs> real. Wait a minute. That's a legit business. I know. Why can't you use that as an expense? It's My entertainment. It's like I, you go on a show, you're getting the, inspiration, the, you're listening to music. The, the, I got to talk to your the, accountant. Look, you can write that off. Look, the thing is, the odds, but check me out. The thing is, you only can, I, I only can write it off if I, like, let's say, for example, if I hire them to, like, extra do something for me. Like, when you throw them in the strip club, they can't, they can't count on what you do. You can say, hey, I threw this right here. We don't know that. Like they, it's, it's kind of like I, unless you get the money from the strip club. Nah, the thing is, you gotta get it from the bank in order for them to know. You can't go to the strip club and the chain. Like so, now when I go to the strip club, I order my ones from the bank so I can get it as a, use as a write off and I let them know what I'm about to do okay. with it. Okay. Oh, you're sharp. Yeah. I don't you know play. what you fucking writing off. Yeah. That's the thing I ain't about. Playing. Like I, I can do it. It's just then I, I, can, I can get you it were from a club. And and I you can, have you're watching your money completely. You don't have anybody else looking after it. Nah, nah, nah. I'm doing it. Wow. Yeah. It doesn't intimidate you? You're not like... No, nah, I'm smart. I'm very intelligent. Yeah I, yeah. I I am financially yeah. illiterate. So basically what I'm trying to tell you is I, I do everything with the bank now. When I want to go to strip club, they have to, I have to order one my bank? ones. Yeah, but really one bank. I or, like right now, if I want, if I need ones, I call mm -hmm. my banker, my accountant, hey, yeah. I need this many ones. Go to the bank, get it. They'll ship it, they'll ship it in the mail if they have to. Really? I done shipped ones in the mail before, but I shipped like $50,000 of ones in the mail. Now, how different is the way that you get treated at your bank now from the first time you walked in? Uh, when I first was going, they'd be like, now when I go in, they'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> so it's a big difference. And do you allow people to change or do you like resent the fact that they're treating you different? Like, what have you learned about people from being wealthy in the way they change in the way they treat they, you. They, they treat you based off how successful you are. Um, um, I feel like I don't know, but me, I, I, I'm a I'm a real person. Like, yeah, they ain't treat me no different than you in there than you treat me now. Yeah. So majority of people I meet, they kind of treat me the same way, like how I expect them to be, expect to be treated. Yeah. I don't really get that super. Spe I'm, I'm first of all, I'm um underrated. As you say, underrated, like underrated. Yeah, underrated. So yeah. with that being said, you they automatically gonna look over me. So when they see me, they're going to be a little more humble to me in a way on them because they, they don't look at me like I'm on a drink level. Or, you know, like, yeah. you feel what I'm saying? Or yeah. Kanye level or something. Yeah. So I'm I'm down there going to get a better understanding, a better conversation out of a person quicker than a Kanye will get out of a person. Yeah, you're not, you're not intimidating. Isn't that right. weird? Like, right. you're not intimidating and you come from a world where being intimidating yes. Is the most important yeah. asset. Yes. That is what's most fascinating to me. Huh? How you learn and transition in that. Most people cannot get out of their own fucking way. I see yeah. this with boxers. I see this with uh, athletes. And I see this with musicians right. across all spheres. Like, you see rock musicians that get famous, blow up, and then they turn into like these divas. You heard yeah. it in like, the 80s and 90s where like Guns N' Roses, Axl Rose wouldn't show up to a fucking concert for four hours. Sometimes he wouldn't Damn. pull up. And it's like, how do you... Yo, you might really be, you might really believe you're a gangster. Like, yeah. you know what you're saying where you believe it inside right. so you don't need to prove it? Right. I think that extends outside of intimidation. Right. I think the people who really know themselves don't feel a need to prove themselves. That's what I was trying to tell you. So guess what? I wish I listened. Now you's a gangster. 
Watch out, bro! Watch out, fellas! We Real out here. So, happy birthday! <laughs> happy birthday to everybody in here! Holy shit! Where the candles at? <laughs> wow, okay. Nah, for real though, bro. Like, my head a rough coming up. Man. I'm just glad to be here, bro. I'm glad to be here doing an interview with you. Like, this shit amazing, bro. I feel good. I smoked some weed this morning. <laughs> I'm kind of sick, but it's okay. We now, don't get to do you ever do you ever get like <clears throat> do you ever get down or are there like disappointing things? Correct. And, and how do you handle those? How do you handle that? How do you bounce back from your disappointments? Or maybe a song didn't go the way you want it to go, or an interaction or a business thing didn't go the way, way you want it to go. Do you dwell in that or can you keep bring push. yourself back up? No, nah, I just keep pushing it. Uh, for the most part, like I have a family. Like, you know, I got kids and stuff, and I got moms and she depend on me. I lost two brothers, so I know at the end of the day, like, no matter what I go through, I'd rather go through it than let them go through it. But I'd rather kill myself or be dead before I see them go through that. Really? Yeah, like, I can't I can't, I can't allow it to happen, so. What happened to your brothers? They got they got shot. Oh, kid. street stuff? Yeah, street stuff. Really? I don't want to talk about, yeah. We don't have to. Yeah, appreciate you. Yeah. And, uh, so, most, for the most part, it's kind of like, uh, man, I, I know at the end of the day, my mama waiting on me. Like, you know she what I'm saying? She you? waiting on me to get home. She waiting on me to come. Right, 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 like, right, right. Before I go to my house, I got to go to my mama's house. I know I'm, I'm, I'm home. Then I go home. When, when. So she can go to sleep. You feel me? A hundred percent. When, when these good things start happening and you come from a place where it seems like so many bad things have happened, do you start going like, is someone looking out for me? Like, do you get religious nah, in that moment? I don't really get rid of it, bro. Like, I get more of like, fuck everybody. No, the, the, all the good shit that's happened. Like, I know that... You know, oh, you said, good, you said the good things. The good I, I things. I'm thinking about bad things. No, no. Like, yeah. there, there are all these bad things that happened earlier in life, right? Right. All these crazy so circumstances. You're saying, like, good things now. Now. now good things start to right, happen. Right, correct. Are you going like, is there a higher power? Like, I'm trying to understand... Like, I've been really fortunate in my okay. life. I had right. a, a great fucking family and parents. And we've all had our troubles and right. shit like that. Everybody had their things, okay. you know? But I have been fortunate, right. you know? Right, okay. So, like... And I work my ass off and good things happen, but I, 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 I'm I able to chalk it up to like working my ass off and that kind of stuff like Correct. that. You're in these situations which are like really fucked up. Right. And then all of a sudden you work your ass off and then good things start to happen. Correct. Does part of you start to go, is this divine intervention? Is this, why me? Why of all the people surrounding, am I the one that gets chosen? Like how do you process going from such a low place to such a high place in such a short period of time. Um, I think for me, I, I, it's easy for me because I always been rich. Like what I mean by that is I always been rich in my head when I was broke, when I didn't have shit. <laughs> Wait, what I'm walking like, I, like for example, like when I was in the hood struggling, going through it. Yeah. In my head, I was a big rapper. I was rich. Every time I went to sleep, I dreamed of this shit. So I, ne I read, I never dreamed of if, or, or face my reality in my dreams. Like just because I'm going through this shit while I'm up, when I'm knocked out. I'm dreaming about some more shit. So you always knew. Yeah, so I always felt like I'm rich as hell. They got me fucked up. I'm coming. I'm still on niggas' neck as soon as I get there. Now, and then what, what I've been doing. When you would walk through the airport before you were famous, did you imagine what it would be like? I already knew. You already knew. I knew. Yeah. I, I, I swear to God, I, I ain't even lying. Like, bro, <laughs> I, I just, I'm, I'm going to tell you what, you what did make me mad. Because, like, people didn't believe me. And they was looking at me like, I, I tell them I'm going to do something. I'm doing this. And they, and, and they don't go through for me. Yeah. Like, I, for, like, I probably just tell them my dream. Yeah. I'm gonna do this right here. I'm gonna do that right there. Yeah. I'm gonna do this because somebody promised me something. Yeah. Then it don't go through for me. They let me down. Now everybody look at me like, oh, you just lying, bro. You just lying. So it's like, I want to lie, bro. My dream just didn't come true. So a lot of times, like, y'all gotta be careful out there when y'all telling, like, kids, like, they lying about shit all the time. Yeah, or don't Because you're making them feel even bad about the shit not coming true. Coming yeah. true. So, like, now when people tell me something and it don't happen, my homie can tell me right now. He can tell me right now, hey, I'm gonna get a record deal tomorrow. This right here, this right there. Ah, oh, for real. It was so he come to me tomorrow. He, he don't get my I ain't even get the deal. I ain't even say, bro, you lying. I'm like, damn, bro. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to hear that, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna try to help you. Like I'm just saying, for example, like Yeah, yeah. People be mine, they this shit the world fucked up. But man. who put I know exactly who put dreaming in my head. <laughs> I know when it happened and how it happened right. in my life. Who put the idea that you can dream in your head? Some people get that squashed on a daily basis. It's, don't be too big. Don't try to ask for too much. Right. Who put that in your head? Honestly, to be honest, me, bro. Like all my every, all my problems I had and I went through in life, I had to get myself out of them and I put myself in them. So like, huh. I was like my my mama was like my dad and my grandma she was like my mama. So with that being said, I still had other brothers. I got I had three other brothers that I had to take care of, and I was like they daddy. 
You know what I'm saying? Or yeah. God, that or soda, whatever yeah, yeah, you put. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like I I couldn't I couldn't really wait around. I I was always nosy when I was little because I I needed to know certain things. I, not that I wanted to know. I ain't want to know how to smoke. I had to know how to smoke because I know <laughs> if, if, it was it was important to know like. I got brothers. Like, I got to make sure they don't do this shit. I want to know what, what's the fit cause when you smoke. It really don't do nothing to you. But, <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is, yeah. it's certain shit like words I had to learn, like shit I had to learn early yeah. only because I didn't want them to be doing the wrong thing. So if I don't, I don't know nothing, I don't know no things. So let me go get around all these grown people and learn all this grown shit because I'm extra taking care of my brother and them. I'm extra here for them. I'm extra, I extra got to make sure they eat tonight. Let me see how, how long, it, I'm, I'm looking at the problems. I'm, I'm on bullshit, bro. I was, I was there for my brothers. I was a father coming up, bro. I've been a father all my life. At what, you know what age do so you think you took I taught that? myself how to dream. That's basically what I'm, the point I'm trying to get to. I taught myself. Nobody teach me shit. I ain't had no daddy. Uh. I had my mom and my grandma. That's it. Uh. And I hid everything from them. So I never told them what I was doing. So it was never. like, hell nah. They knew part of it, but I ain't never tell them. But So I hid shit. So I couldn't go to certain people for a certain advice, bro, because they weren't like I, like I was. You know what I'm saying? Like They weren't living like me. I was living a whole nother way. They living this way. And I was living this way. And you could just, you could just stomach those things. Like there was never a time you just need to like vent to a friend or a girl or something like that. You would just, and you would take all of it to yourself. I ain't gonna lie, I vent plenty of time, bro. When I vent, I just call my mom and I, you know, let them tears go. Or put yeah. up on her and cry. I go, I put up my mom and cry, cry with her. You know what I'm saying? So like, there was like, this coming up. Like when I was coming up, she wasn't going right for me, bro. Like I, I put up on my mom and cry about it. She like, you know what I'm saying? She keep going, just don't worry about it. It's okay. And I just do my thing. Bro, I ain't, I ain't keep it 100, bro. I'm straight. I'm, I'm a Herman Bain, bro. Like, no lie. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's like, bro, like, with me, it's kind of like, bro, like, I, I know, what I'm, I know what I'm, what I'm going to do 10 years from now and 20 years from now, 30 years from now. My my life I already planned out. I already yeah. planned my life out. How I got this shit wrote down? Come on, man. You know, I, what real rapper coming here like this? Yeah. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> yeah, I got y'all notes. I got my notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, people, you got they, they make you feel like you got to know this shit off the top of your head. My, I don't know nah, this shit. Nah, just write it down. Leo, can you please write this down for me? <laughs> Thank you, darling. I'm gone there now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, or, you know, whatever. Jew, whatever, whoever. Anybody yeah. on my team. But get this shit wrote down. We going, we going at it. Ten Four years flesh. from now, where are you? Oh, uh, I'm going to be real super, super, super successful. I'm really, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get that billion dollar. You want to be a billionaire? A billion. You want to be a billionaire? Yeah, Jay-Z worth a billion, so... Why can't, why I can't be worth for being? What is it? I've always been curious about being a billionaire and why why we put that as like a uh, as like a goal, right? Because for me, like a billion dollars is kind of like a you know in basketball a triple double, right? It's like it's an even thing, but it's really no better than another statistic that's close. Yeah. Like let's say you average thirty points a game, ten rebounds, uh-huh. nine assists, right? Is that that much worse than averaging 30, 10, and 10? I don't really know much about what you just said. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. I was talking about gangster shit. But, uh, <laughs> no. But, but, nah, I, I, but you know what I'm saying? Like, like if you want to be a billionaire, you could transfer all your money right now into like some like Asian currency that's worth nothing. And now you're a billionaire in that. Damn. So what I'm you're saying- You're already a billionaire. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So basically what, what, what I'm saying is like, to be honest, I, I, I'm, I'm going to go hard all the way till I turn 50. And then I think when I turn 50- I'm going to go back to it. I never got a chance to be a kid, bro. I want to be a kid again. So you're going to Benjamin Button in the game? Yeah, man. I'm going to go. If at 50, I'm cutting. I don't give a fuck what's going on. I I, have, I, I got I got shit, investments and shit. Right. I can, I'm going to forever get paid off that. My kids and they kids, everybody. But as far as me trying to like just go super hard, hurt my back. No, sir. So at 50, 50, you out. 50, I'm living my life. And where do you go? Do you travel? I'm just going to make sure I'm set up. To, I need to be a billionaire before I turn 50, so... I can spend a hundred million, you know what I'm saying, on, on some bullshit and it ain't, ain't gonna hurt me. Yeah. Yeah, I still wanna ride boats and run. I wanna ride the boat. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? I'm just being a hundred. Yeah. Yeah, so that's my goal. Dude, I appreciate you so much for coming in, nah, man. I appreciate and you I'm, for having I'm, me, bro. I think I'm more fascinated now that I've met you in person, <laughs> but it, it's one of these things that it happens over and over again. Like when I see people, especially on social media, having consistent success, not one video that pops. Right. But consistent success. Right. I never underestimate how much they understand the field that they're in. And yeah. whenever I meet them, it's always confirmed that they know exactly what they're doing. Right. So it's cool. It's cool to see you. It's great to meet you, man. I really appreciate you right. doing this. Thank nah, you so I much, man. You, bro. For sure. Thanks a, lot. Thanks a lot for coming in, guys. Yeah.